And we're live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of your friendly ex-Muslim, the friendly ex-Muslim podcast, rather. I'm your host, Abdullah Samir. So it's been a while since I've been live. Actually, it's been way too long. Believe it or not, this is the first live stream I've done in 2022. So I haven't done anything. So I have the honor today to talk to Hani, Hani Salim from uh, Clinical Faculty. So Hani had me on his channel and we talked about a lot of interesting things. We went through my story. And today we're going to we're going to talk about the moral issues and scientific issues in the Quran and Sunnah. And and Hani, to begin, how is how is it going? You had some Internet problems, did you? What happened? <laughs> yes, it's happened to me today. It's uh, Murphy's Law. Um, I've never never had problems in the past, but um, yeah, a bit of a had to reboot the modem, modem a few times and, and the PC. So, yeah, this, this, you know, I decided to do all sort of updates finally, suddenly. <laughs> so you just, you're just like, you're just getting started and you're all sweaty already. <laughs> Letting us out, trying to... I know, it's a horrible feeling. <laughs> We're going to keep you on your edge now. So, so first question, are you ex-Muslim? Is that your back? Can you tell us about your background? I've actually lived uh, two religions uh, at the same oh. time because my mother... I was Christian. Um, my dad, Egyptian Muslim, mom is Irish Catholic. And um, well, they used to be both of them. They're, my father was an atheist growing up and my mother was more of a sort of a deist um, type of new age spiritual <laughs> Christ, you know, that mishmash of, uh, of weird Christianity. Uh, she's no longer, she's an atheist as well um, oh. at the moment. Yeah. So um, yeah, but we, I didn't have traumas going, growing up. Uh, Maybe because uh, your audience is probably more used to the traumatic type of stories where there was a bit of a struggle. But actually, I don't have a problem at all with, with, with religion as such growing up because I was brought up in a, in a household where uh, religions, philosophy, psychology, all sort of readily available for me to, to read and choose whatever I want to choose. So uh, I kind of lived two religions at the same time. But at the age of 15, uh, I've taken up Islam as the version that I am going to seriously take. You know, when you're a teenager and you're going to mm -hmm. stand up to your dad for the first time and you want to be <laughs> different than him. He was an atheist and I thought, oh, I'm going to be a Muslim. Uh, and I, you know, I started growing, you know, a little bit of hair. I was very proud of the hair. So how can I use my new beard? Oh, Islam is funny. <laughs> yeah. What inspired you to to become religious? Like, was it friends? What was it like? How did you end up in that in that cloud? Because it happened to me as well. Yeah. Well, honestly, it was it was exactly that. It was me, uh, you know, being a teenager and want to sort of, you know, the the Freudian um, uh, hypothesis that you're always wanted to remove your dad from the picture so you can have your mother off for yourself. <laughs> uh, and and uh, you stand up to your dad and you want to be slightly different. You know, you go right. through all these debates. And I, I said, oh, I'll prove Islam is right for you. You, you know, you think you're a big shot. Um, so uh, more of a teen, teenage re rebellion for me. Oh yeah. And I start reading, and I like bloody hell, he's right all along. <laughs> so how how long did that process go on for? Like when um, you became religious and you were trying to prove Islam, you started growing your beard, um, going to the mosque, all of that. Like how long did that entire process take? Oh, this was about eight months. Altogether. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but wow. I stayed. I stayed kind of. I didn't say. I didn't straight away declare that I've left religion. Uh, so probably at the age of seventeen, I uh, completely was done. But eight months into it, I think was less than a year for sure. Mm. I've realized, oh, oh, something isn't right. <laughs> mm. And so, so from that experience, what made you want to talk about these things? Like, what what inspired you? Why is it so important to you? Well. So in my on my channel, I don't speak about religion so much. But mm -hmm. you know, when you speak about science and philosophy, which is um what I care for the most, um, is um, uh, you're gonna have to touch on science every now. Uh, sorry, on religion, uh, it's inevitable. If you talk about human rights, if you talk about anything in life, uh, because religion used to be the op um, uh, modus operandi um, some time ago. This is how you done philosophy, uh, politics, and especially when you talk Islam. Islam is all over your face. Like it's it just, it just everywhere. You can't escape it. Uh, there isn't a gift to Caesar. What's to Caesar and to God, what's to God. It's, it's political religion, as you know. So it's very difficult to escape Islam. If you're a Muslim, it's in the banking, it's in your bedroom for God's sake. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's very difficult to get away from it. And um, yeah, I've realized something, something inherently wrong in the, in the doctrine for sure. 
Mm -hmm. So, so your focus is more science, philosophy, <laughs> and religion is it kind of it it falls into it falls into that because it overlaps everything in life. It especially the Islamic religion. Do you think? Do you find that the Muslim community is becoming more religious do you think or less religious what do you what what do you see from the reactions to your channel from when you first started doing this until until now what are you what are you what are you noticing i think the world's gonna is going through a metamorphosis now uh, at the moment it is changing spirituality is becoming a thing everybody's diluting which has been happening from day one anyway i think uh it's an inherent problem in the religion and the way that god is for some reason insisting on and in conveying his message in languages, uh, which uh, will dictate perception. And if you perceive uh, the message in your own way, based on your own IQ uh, experiences, you will inevitably uh, perceive it slightly different than everybody else. So I always contented that uh, everybody has a slightly different version of God and different uh, version of religion itself. Mm -hmm. um, so it's an inherent problem in the, in the way God transferred um, his word through language. Um, uh, it, to me, uh, it, it's if, if God wanted to convey his message, it would have made more sense. It would have been through ideas, download mm -hmm. of, direct download of ideas. But once you uh, inscripted in languages, uh, and especially in a language that's almost, almost dead, I think Arabic is not going to have much life to go. Uh, it, it's not very flexible. Does It's not changing with time. Um, and it's quite apparent because if you're an, I'm a native Arabic speaker, I can mm -hmm. understand the Quran firsthand. Um, it's, it's, uh, you read it and, and a lot of, if you're, even if you're a native Arabic speaker, you stop at a lot of words because they, you don't understand what these words are. They're mm -hmm. not, they're no longer in use. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, why would God choose a, a, a language knowing that it changes with time with time and even the use of the same word uh will change over time i mean nobody knows that the word now a lot of people don't know the word gay meant at some point mm -hmm, uh mm -hmm. you know like you can actually wish somebody a, a gay day yeah. uh, in, in 1930 or 1940 and it would have meant something completely different than how we understand the word today so it's uh, it's a problematic uh, area for me yeah, the language thing, um, the choice of language, Arabic, not only the choice of language, excuse me, the, the way that the language was written at the time with the lack of vowels, um, diacritical marks, all of that was added after the fact. Um, the, the early manuscripts of the early Quranic manuscripts, they just had, they didn't have dots. So you don't know whether this is a ta, a ba, or a ya. Right. So is it like, you know, yada, bada. So I think the people at that time, they understood from the context or this probably it probably they probably weren't that strict about it. Like we are like now we have this, you know, every dot, every every syllable, every, you know, delay and recitation it all comes from Allah. But back then they were probably like just reading it, whatever it said. They were like, yeah, OK, one guy reads it this way. The other guy reads it that way. And it's funny because it actually caused conflicts even among the Sahaba, right? Like um, Omar heard one of the Sahaba leading a certain way. And he's like, what are you, why are you leading it like that? He's like, I heard it. I heard the Prophet leading it. He's like, I want to take you there. They go to the Prophet. He's like, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's funny, right? It's a very human process, like you said. It's a very, you, everything about it is so human. It's just when, when, the, when the genie's out of the lamp, you know, it, it's hard to put it back in, isn't it? It's just like once you see the truth for what it is, once you see the reality of Islam or all the religion, it's just how do you how do you believe in it again after that? Right. Well, I mean, one of the things that Muslims are very, very proud um, of is, is that the Quran has never changed. Mm -hmm. It's exactly the same way it was written pre the creation of humans because the, the quran <laughs> in, the, in the in the in the preserved um uh, plate you know that the, it was written Allah al -Mahfuz, right? Allah al -Mahfuz, yeah. yes uh, and that's quite interesting because it means that um uh, Ab abu lahab uh, the guy who was uh, sort of been uh, talked badly about in the quran had no choice in the matter uh, yeah. he, his conduct was written way before he was created uh, did he have free will? <laughs> yeah, so that's that's an interesting comment, uh, interesting point about the free will thing. 
as that's also another huge um like paradox how did you how do you understand the paradox of free will in islam in islam specifically not in in you know in science i think most muslims especially the conservative muslims uh, they claim they don't have free will and they're okay with it i, I think that what makes sense to me because uh, it, it is actually written all over the Quran that it, it, God chooses who he would like to sort of um, yeah. uh, pr provide faith to or, or seal the heart if he wants yeah. to. So there is no say in the matter. Remember, the, and, and, and this is the contrast of the relationship, the dynamics in Judaism, Islam and Christianity. This is a contract between master and slave. Let's let's make no mistake. This is not yeah. a father. This is not a heavenly father in the sky. This is the uh, the good old fashioned dad. You do as you told top of that. The divine yeah. command theory of God. So there is no free will, and they're okay with it. They're just hoping uh, that they are going to be one of those people that would God choose in a in a in a lottery uh, uh, to provide guidance. You know. So um, from. From what I've what I've heard, there's a lot of different ways that Muslims try to deal with this or out out. So, from my perspective, first of all, there is a problem. the The reason we know there's a problem is because whenever Muslims come to this issue, they always get confused, and I got confused as a Muslim. and And there's there's no real good solution to it. It's one of those things that when you try to um, rational, it's almost like the Trinity type of situation where it, it's logically incoherent. So you have to come up with analogies to make sense out of it. But the same, this is the same problem. You have a, you have a contradiction here that's inherent to the, the, the theology. One, one part of it says you have free will. The other part of it says everything is Qadr, right? So there's Qadr and Qadr. So how do you resolve the two? There's been multiple sects or schools of thought, the Jamiites and the Qadriyites, and you know, I, a lot of these different people that try to resolve this conflict, and they they all had different ways of resolving it. I remember that I, when I was Muslim, I remember the sheikhs saying things like, "Don't think about it too much. Don't try to understand this because you're not going to be able to understand it. It's for it's only Allah knows, like things like that." One one scholar I remember or a preacher would say something to the effect of only the intention is yours, but the action is not yours. Like it's kind of like it's weird. So basically what you want to do is what you're rewarded for, not, not what you actually do. I don't know. And other people say that from our perspective, we do have free will. The way I see it, and tell me if you disagree, if we have free will like truly have free will, libertarian free will, not from a religious perspective, that makes us like gods too. Because that means God's authority is not ultimate. If God has ultimate decision-making power over every single human being, every single creature, then we cannot have free will. We, it can't. You cannot have it both ways because that implies, like, it's not possible. Logically, either God is the one that decides or you know knows and everything happens according to his will or we have free will and therefore god is in some way limited because we have autonomy <laughs> right even if our autonomy is limited like we can't you know create beings out of blow you know blow into clay and make it to life like supposedly god allah did we can't do that but we still within what we can do theoretically i i can choose whether to raise my hand not raise my hand punch and without that you know there's no it, hell and heaven becomes meaningless because if hell and heaven is so so when i ask when i ask scholars or when i try to re reconcile this they would say things like uh, again it's all stupid stuff it's like god makes it easy for you to do the deeds that you're destined to do <laughs> so so it's still your deed so this is a different opinion now it's still you doing it but like if so, because and, and another thing, then why do you pray to God? Like, why are you asking God to do it? The free will thing is such a mind screw. Like, there's no, there's no way out of, there's no coherent way out of this mess, right? The 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 the, the term free will uh, in the existence of the omnipotent and omniscient God is incoherent concept. It can't be. It right. can't be right. right. Even the existence of an um, um, uh, uh, omnipotent and omniscient God is also incoherent. 
because I can give you an example. Sure, uh, go ahead. If, 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 God, if God knows the future, uh, and that's omniscience, mm -hmm. knows everything, can he change what he was going to do in the future? Because that's omnipotence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you'll, you'll come to a contradiction straight away. <laughs> that's an interesting question. Yeah, it, it's it, the, 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 the absolutes and all God's attributes lead to contradictions. Yeah. It, it, it's inevitable. I'm now content free will is an illusion. But yeah. Um, I'm, 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 I'm a compatibilist. So I'm not a determinist. I, I'm, look, I'm a determinist at heart, but I yeah. want to live this life. I know that the things that I'm choosing to choose, I'm like, I'm like Cypher in the Matrix. I know the stake that doesn't exist. <laughs> I yeah. know, but, but it's okay. I, I need to enjoy it, you know. Otherwise, I go mad. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's a good that's a good point. Actually, um, I'm on the same page that I I don't believe there's any such thing as free will, which again, from a scientific perspective or a philosophical perspective, whatever you want to call it, it it does mean that heaven and hell don't make any sense again. Like you Absolutely. know, when we look at human beings, when we look at how we behave, when we look at animals, well, first of all, it's very clear we are animals. Like we are exactly animals that's that's what we are and mm -hmm. yes we have this gift that animals don't have we have this rationality we're able to you know plan for the future and all of that make tools like no other animal can so we will obviously you know our mind is much more powerful than those animals we're able to understand death we understand we're able to make up gods <laughs> you know i don't know if animals do that there's been some there's been some you know, observation of animals that looks like they're doing something religious, but we, I mean, we don't really know if the monkeys are just like, we don't know what's going on there. Like, we're not sure what's what they're doing exactly. Um, but yeah, with, with the free will thing, it's, it's fascinating because free will, I think, is another bullet that kills Islam. Mm -hmm. Because the reality is that, you know, we, we operate according to our brains. Who gave us our brains? God gave us the brains. Okay, so if God gave us these brains, that means God also gave us tendencies. Like as a man, I have certain tendencies. Women have certain tendencies. Those and and certain abilities, okay. right? And 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 inclinations. And and some of those inclinations are bad. Like for example, we see rape, murder, theft, greed, all of these things. Which you know, when we look at it from an evolutionary perspective, some of those things actually had adaptive benefit, right? Being selfish, greedy, and whatever. Of course. You know, I, I do believe that we've evolved to be, you know, you you know, creatures of society, creatures that actually care about other people. And, you know, there's more to you benefit more from helping others as a society and as an individual from just being greedy and selfish and self-centered. Of course, there'll always be psychopaths and people like that. But for the most part, like I, I naturally don't have any desire to rob my you know my neighbor's grandma when she's in the alley i like if she fell down i'd pick you know if she dropped her wallet i'd give it to her i have no no desire to steal you know what i'm saying like i don't have those inclinations but those inclinations do exist in human beings and when you when you put in a corner in a war type situation or something it comes out like you you will want you'd rather kill someone else than be killed yourself you you know all of us and i think some of us get shocked by just how dark you know we can how badly we can behave when we're coined, right? Like if someone threatens you or your family, you can actually turn into a monster, right? And, and we, we, had, we had this conversation yesterday with Dr. Price about pacifism. Oh, yeah. We had a conversation well, yeah. about pacifism, whether it's logically coherent, whether it actually makes sense. And, and yes, you're right. We, we all turn into that self-preservation mode. But uh, here is a proposition for you as well. Um, if Islam is the one true religion, just the virtue by you uh, being born Muslim, uh, I probably have one up from you because I, I, I'm a Muslim in a, in a, in a, an Arabic native speaker. Um, uh, uh, but imagine somebody who's born uh, in India to a Hindu um, uh, family. And as you know, 95% of the population will never change uh, religion. Yeah. They'll stick to... So here we go. From the word go, somebody has been given... Uh, a bit of a favor here. I mean, where is the justice in that? Uh, yeah, be, that's right. Ridley born in the right religion, you know. Yeah, that that like unfair situation where you know some people like depending on what 
situation you're born in, you're more or less lucky because you're going to end up having a harder or easier test. Muslims will always pull the, well, you know, this this get out of jail card, which is, well, maybe they didn't receive the message. They'll always say that. To me, that's that's actually not really a good argument because the Quran doesn't emphasize this. It's it's I don't even know where this comes from that, like, you know, because the Quran actually says the opposite. It says everybody was given the message. Everybody mm-hmm. received the message. Prophets were sent to every nation. And then I think from the Hadith is where they come up with this exemption. But the exemption is never meant to be the entire United States disbelieving population is all going to be going to paradise because none of them got the message properly or they they found ISIS they, they saw ISIS on TV and they're like oh this is Islam so they got the long especially long if image. they appeal to Fitra you know if they appeal to Fitra that means everybody is born Muslim and you kind of resist it to stray away from it one way or yeah. another so you, you you ought to go back to your nature kind of thing yeah yeah so so going back to the free will thing you know we see certain animals for example, I believe it was uh, I was watching this this documentary on Netflix, the one that Obama is um, reading or uh, um, narrating, and it talked about sea lions. Like with sea lions, the female, the male sea lion calls out, and the female sea lion comes to him. Whereas for other animals like walruses or whatever, like the the male is the is the sexually aggressive one. And and in some animals where there's no there's no even consent in the sense that like the animal will forcibly inseminate the female. Mm-hmm. So that's part of the design of nature where you call it design. It's not design, obviously. It's it's the way that it evolved. Mm-hmm. But like for someone that believes in God, you have to believe that God made these animals like rape and murder and do all these things, including humans, including humans, right? So now with humans, you know, theists will always say, well, there's free will. But with animals, like why would God design animals to do that? And why would he even, like, going back to humans, why would he make us with these like dark inclinations if there are alternatives that have less harm where you can still p- have a test? You can still do the test without having the, the sheer amount of cruelty and suffering. And, you know, we humans are like, we can do a lot of really bad things, like much worse than any animal would do. Yet you have animals where, even by nature, they don't have those options because they, they're they like, they'll they'll signal to the partner, okay, I, I'm ready, come. There's none of this aggressiveness. Some animals have that aggressiveness. Like, we, we're one of those that do. So it's kind of like messed up, right? Like, did God design us to be, like, evil? If he did, then he is responsible. He's literally, ultimately responsible for giving us a gun and putting it in our hands, right? Well, th- this goes back to the original... Um... Uh, problem of evil. I don't like the, the, the term problem of evil. I prefer uh, the problem of suffering. Uh, mm-hmm. And it's it's actually evolved because Thomas Aquinas attempted to um, to resolve it by saying, well, uh, it's free will and you require uh, a bit of harm doing for you to develop a, a character. Uh, but then that's why he, it evolved into um, <laughs> the evidential problem of, of evil or prov- evidential problem of suffering. So we're talking about gratuitous suffering why would you design uh, a world where to to obtain energy we're talking calories here just energy to operate your body to eat uh, and uh, the flesh of another sentient being uh, uh, we could have evolved to to uh, uh, get that energy from the sun you know it, it quite easily without having to but when you uh, and that requires absolutely no conscious whatsoever because uh, we are only been on this planet um, uh, as a homo sapien sapien, 300,000 years. That's the oldest found in Morocco. Uh, but even uh, the common ancestor that we share, uh, believe it or not, folks, we have not come from monkeys like they have you uh, told, uh, but we share a common ancestor some 7 million years ago. Uh, but the, the age of the dinosaurs, there were no humans. I, again, don't get your signs from... Um, uh, Flintstone, because uh, we have not existed with the uh, with the dinosaurs. Um, uh, uh, these animals were uh, devouring each other's flesh, and there were no experiences or lessons to be drawn from that because humans didn't even exist. Uh, that is, this will be completely understood in uh, scientific evolution. Uh, absolutely, there's no moral dilemma there. But in the existence of a loving God. Uh, there is a big, big, big problem, uh, and that's one of the, the the twins of you know the you've got the problem of evil, problem of suffering, and to me the, the even bigger one it's the one that is 
slam dunk for me. It's the problem uh, of uh, divine hiddenness. Mm. Uh, Before we get to that, just to clarify, uh, so you believe in evolution, honey? Yes, I trust in evolution, yes. Uh, yeah. I, don't, I try not to use the word faith and believe and stuff like that as if uh, because it's falsifiable, there are so I, I trust it, it to be to be true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I would say, I mean, I don't mind saying believe, but I don't mean believe in the sense of um, faith. like it's a faith based thing, mm -hmm. but I, I accept it and I believe in it too. Means I, I do believe it's true, right? Like, yeah. I, I mean, some things we believe are also for sure true like i believe i'm real <laughs> that doesn't mean i i only only have faith in it but yeah i um arabian princess for sure this is the best model you know even you have theists that believe in evolution it's not limited to atheists yeah i think that's something that some theists try to straw man onto evolution the, the fact is the vast majority actually i'd say any decent scientist that has his worth would believe in evolution because it's the model that explains best how we got here. It, it it explains and predicts, you know, changes in our bodies based on how medicine reacts. Or, you know, pharmacy, all the pharmaceuticals are based on evolution and you know, on an understanding of a body. Like everything in science, I mean, there's no there's no better model for the way we are why we are why we are the way we are than evolution like i you can't you can't to me this one thing is so powerful that it just like annihilates religion and that's why theists tend to sometimes go into a corner where they'll they'll say um i i don't want to accept evolution even though the, sci the science is so powerful so what they'll do is they'll they'll instead accept macro micro evolution which is basically the same thing but the, they don't want to admit that it it gets to the level of species change right yes uh, they they accept the micro the adaptability of species within the environment but they they, they always uh, species stays the same a cat is a cat a cat will never turn into a dog <laughs> but they don't understand speciation because it's not observable because they they will say well if you call it science it has to be observable uh, they don't understand speciation happens with something called genetic drift and geographic drift and it takes an average between two to five million years for speciation to occur um it, it's it's uh, so it's it's not observable but yeah. so a lot of sciences you know we have not observed the uh, the big bang uh, yeah. yet we can infer it quite easily by using uh, this microwave background and a lot of other sciences where mm. it confirms the the event yeah it it, it gets to the point where the almost like becoming conspiracy theorists when they say I want to see it, because that's what conspiracy theorists say. They say, flat earthers, for example, they say, I won't believe it until I see it. Well, most of our, our um, knowledge that we've accumulated as humans, we are going on the on the shoulders of giants. People that they figured out these things long before. I mean, you don't even need NASA to know the Earth is a sphere. Ancient Greeks were like figuring this out from shadows yeah. and stuff. Right? I mean, it's Me not. Either. You don't need NASA. But the problem is, if you don't trust anyone or anything, and you have to like go back to square one for every single thing. Like, I don't believe in Pythagoras theorem. I don't believe a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, well, we can prove it. <laughs> you can drive it again, right? So it's not like, but but people that are not, you know, but what do you think about people that say, oh, you guys worship scientism? You're you're science. I don't even know if there's a word, scientismists. Yeah, they call it scientism. So it's really funny when you talk about, I, I believe it when I see it. And I'm going to say, I wish you used the same standards of evidence. Yeah. <laughs> <You're okay. laughs> so imagine they ask you that. that everybody's quite the skeptic and they're quite the scientist when yeah. it comes to other people's beliefs. Uh, yeah. But a blind spot, you've got a soft spot for your own belief and you don't demand the same sort of evidence. Um, it's really funny. Uh, but uh, if, if they apply the same concept to their own belief, they go, wow, it, 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 maybe there's something in there. However, science is quite de demonstrable. You can actually demonstrate science. That's what, what science does. That's why if you build an airplane based on science, it flies. If you uh, uh, build a car uh, based on science, it, it goes from A to B. Science works. The scientific method works. That's why we are able, I'm in Australia, 
you're in Canada and we can have this lovely conversation because of science, it's made possible, probably watched by many people all over the world. Um, uh, religion, however, it might at some point, and here we go, this is, this is where I'm not a, the biggest hater of religion because I am uh, convinced that religion uh, was the type of epistemology needed, and it, it was a good thing, by the way, Remember, Abdullah, we have not evolved to know the truth. We've evolved to survive. And even an idea that will help you survive as a group of people, even if it does not reflect the uh, the objective truth out there, it's good enough. If, you, if there's an idea that can unite a group of people uh, to survive uh, the harsh conditions of reality, uh, nature is indifferent that way. It will favor that group if they stick together. However, when the, when the epistemology or the tools of knowledge evolve and you can actually find out the objective truth to a certain degree, you should abandon. Even the tools of knowledge and epistemology should evolve themselves. Mm -hmm. mm, interesting. I'm just going to read a couple of the comments um, before we get anywhere. Um, so Arabian Princess was asking if we evolved from monkeys or we, we descended from monkeys. We believe that's not that's not what evolution says. So I, I highly recommend that people that are interested in this topic to not try to learn this from a YouTube live stream because we're not going to be able to teach biology here, right? I mean, this is this is basic, I don't know, grade 9 or grade 10 biology that you can learn. Uh, pick up a book, go on YouTube. There's so much information. I mean, we're, we're spoiled today. Like, compared to, you know, my generation, if I wanted to learn something, I had to go to the library and read a book. This generation, yeah. it's like you just go online and everything is there and beautifully presented, you know, edited. Um, you know, it, the, the content is just amazing. There's just amazing content out there, right? Mind so, you, mind you, Abdullah, the, this comment uh, up there is 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 uh, fairly accurate. That's exactly. No, no, this one's good. I, I'm saying, I'm saying this. I meant this comment about um, seven million. Yeah. We came from monkeys. Yeah, so I was just saying this is not the like this is not the right venue to to resolve these issues. But we did like we did explain it a bit. But you you'll be more convinced if you actually look into the history and you understand the gen how the genetics work. You know how how we know this. How how do we know how where we came from? How, what what about the chromosomes and what are the similarities? Look at the DNA, right? And, pri um, and primates are not monkeys, by the way. Just I want to say the gorillas, chimpanzees, and orangutan. These are the primates. Hmm. We actually have, we actually classified as primates. Okay. We are primates. We are apes. So these are apes, primates, right. not monkeys. Yeah, I think they mean monkeys and. In the, more in, in the colloquial <laughs> sense, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So, um, Yasser Qadi said something to the effect that there has never been anything more challenging to Islam than evolution. This is by Waladun. I, I think um, <laughs> this comment is going to be repeated over and over again with different, instead of evolution, it's going to be this insert blank here has never been more challenging to islam than anything else it's going to keep happening over and over again it's not just you know first it was the science the cosmology then it was the 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 holes in the quran you know issue with the preservation then it's the evolution then it's going to be something else the language issues the more we find out the stories in the quran you know where they came from all of these things are any any ancient book that claims to be from god it has it's put itself at a very very high standard and it's it's going to, the burden of proof is going to be very difficult to, to maintain that this is from God. <laughs> you know what I mean? If it was from God, it should be easy to know this. But, you know, the reality is that it's, it's falling apart, you know, day by day. Um, let me see if there's any more comments. Um, <laughs> Arabic translated meme says with space tourism, they will see it. <laughs> Flat Earth is going extinct in the next 15 years. Yeah. Eventually, be able to see it with your own eyes. I mean, there are people who have been able to see it with their own <laughs> eyes. I mean, uh, that's honestly, and, and this is why you shouldn't, folks, uh, involve in a debate with a flat earther, because this is an objective, objectively verified truth. We, we, we now know um, NASA isn't uh, conspiring. The moon hasn't been split and been super glued back together, like they have you told. You know, it's... Uh, we, we, <laughs> It, it didn't happen. A lot of a lot of the comments from the from the religious crowd, though, are actually unfalsifiable in the sense that 
you know, like you said, the the earth was uh, sorry, the moon was split. Like I I understood a lot of these things as a Muslim in an unfal unfalsifiable way. So, for example, I wasn't looking for like NASA to show a crack on the moon because I just assumed, well, God doesn't need super glue; He just put it back the same way. Like it, yeah. it's the same. There's no crack. Like why does it need to be a crack? The, doesn't the hadith doesn't say there's a crack? So. People assume there's a crack and then they they see the crack and or they hit, heard the fake news and that, that reconfirmed the faith because now to them, that's like a sign. But it, if it wasn't a crack, they just say there's no crack, like like I was thinking, right? So it's like, it's it's kind of, you know, you're playing whack-a-mole because you you hit one, another one pops off. It's just like, how do you win this game, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's very funny because remember, and, and we need to probe the story. Uh, this is a, a kind of global event. If the moon was really split in two, um, yeah. uh, we've, yeah. we yeah. have um, the Chinese about uh, 1,100 years ago reporting a supernova, a supernova, oh, okay. the explosion of a giant star which lights the sky for about two weeks. Oh, wow. So we have that in, in cultures. So you would imagine a culture, because uh, this is how you do his, proper history and collaboration, is you have a, a, a civilization that has absolutely no benefit whatsoever saying we've witnessed that and then your story has been collaborated or been confirmed by somebody who's unbiased and they go oh there, there must be some elements of truth yeah but nobody's seen that and we were able to see other global events mm. so it has to be a hoax yeah i i would i would have thought even if there was some sort of confirmation that you know my first the first thing I would wonder was, is this some scientific phenomena, phenomena that we don't understand rather than God did this? Because again, the burden of proof is pretty high to assume that God miraculously came and did something weird like that. And then, you know, split the moon, put it back together. Um, it's funny because some of the Hadith say that the, the, the moon was split between the two mountains. Like it was between the mountains. So I don't know if that's what they misunderstood. Like, I don't know. Is, is, there's some, well, it, it, remember, it could have been a lunar eclipse. What if it yeah. was a lunar eclipse and and with the with the with the the power of suggestion and with ignorance uh you know we're talking about peasants in in the desert and you say look i'm about but well, I, I don't think it was a lunar eclipse because that would have required um would have required um muhammad to be uh science savvy to, to well, use a, a scientific um there uh, were there were eclipses though and there's actually yes. even a prayer there right, for eclipses so yeah yes. I, I, this seems to be a, a distinct and the funny thing is you know the quran when it talks about the moon being split it it's i again it's also possible that this like miracle was you know invented later because the fact is some people like quranists would say that the moon being split is a sign of the day of judgment not a miracle that muhammad did for his nation so yes. we don't even really know like what the quran is saying without the hadith to back it up and explain it which again the hadith came way later so it's all too convenient right like we don't we don't really know like what happened what we know is there's something in the quran that talks about the moon being split and then as part of the religion building exercise it became a miracle that the prophet did for the people it's like <laughs> really like yeah of course what you're saying makes more sense that it's just a story a hoax or whatever the reality is that there was no event this was not anything you know natural this was just some story that they made up yeah. this, this, Remember, this, is, this was in the hadith and sira so it, the, the the quranic verse you're absolutely spot on most educated muslims are saying that there's nothing to do with the miracle of splitting the moon this is more of a sign for the end of days there's actually a poem a pre-islamic poem that mm -hmm. has exactly the same words about uh, the hour has come and the moon is split it was oh, wow. written by, by, by a poet a pre-islam almost mm. verbatim word for word that's why the uh, writer the author um taha hussein of egypt mm -hmm. has written a book called of of um pre-islamic poetry making reference to either either the pre-islamic poetry was made up in the abbasian mm. uh, uh, um, uh, uh, empire or whether the quran itself was a later version of itself and it was written uh, way after the events yeah that's the that's the problem with um um the lack of not the lack of evidence that we have that a lot of the the pre-islamic content has become contaminated and we don't know whether it's actually pre-islamic or whether someone wrote it after the fact and said it was pre-islamic and unfortunately for us 
I'm I'm hundred percent sure that some of this like lang. I mean, come on, it's obvious. Muhammad was using language from his time, so clearly he would have referenced like sayings. That, I mean, we know that from even the stories in the Quran, like the the story of the elephant. That's just folklore. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he yeah. took that story that pre existed and he put it into the into the Quran. So we know that he did that. But even the language, I think, if he had better evidence. Unfortunately, a lot of that content has been destroyed or like it's been contaminated. So we don't know whether it actually was copying the Quran's language or the Quran was copying its language. Regardless, we don't even need we don't need that to know it's not from God. We know that. Like this, this is very human, right? The, that's exactly how you play the game with the prophecies. You know, the the the, the Romans and the Persians, and how uh, the Quran predicted that the Romans will win again mm -hmm. uh, at some point. Um, uh, but it's exactly like if uh, I'm going to give it to people in in a, in a, in a contemporary form. Uh, it, let's let's imagine you're a you're a Liverpool fan. Liverpool and Chelsea are playing in the FA Cup final. Very since I'm very excited. Um, uh, imagine I'm reporting that Liverpool that I predict predicted some 90 years ago that Liverpool is going to beat Chelsea three one in a final. Uh, but because it's 90 years ago, I could have written this report a couple of days after the game is finished uh, and it's been published but it, it, i can backdate it to a couple of days earlier in the game making me sound that i predicted uh, the game but it's actually it was written after the event so that's how a lot of prophecies are they're actually reverse reverse engineered they're back mm. to front uh, and you can do that a lot especially when we're talking about something that is hundreds and thousands of years ago mm. yeah yeah so yeah, that's that is a big problem too. That we don't have the precise dating of the events, and also the line. So about that miracle of Surah Room, I remember reading a hadith about it. Where oh, it's so funny. Abu Bakr made a bet based on the Quranic verse that one of the you know the Romans were going to win, and then what happened was he said, uh, I think three to six. I don't remember the exact, but three to six years. I'm going to bet you they're going to win. But they won after like 10 years or something, right? So then Muhammad said, why did you bet only six years? He's like, yeah, well, I understood the words of the Quran to mean that. He's like, no, no, it means up to this length of time. <laughs> something like that, right? The word, so, the word uh, bada, uh, bada is, sinin, right? It's supposed to be between three, because otherwise if it's two, you can use the if nine. Right. Uh, so between three and nine. Right. According to, according to the, the, the historical narrative, it happened in seven years. Okay. So actually within the context of the word Bada. Okay, uh, okay, got it. Yeah. So they, they are saying, but we don't know. We, we this could could have been 10 years written after. Remember, the, the Quran, and, and we probably need to uh, explain it to the folks, because the, the, the book was not collected at all um, at the end of Muhammad's era, was never collected. He died, and the whole thing was pretty much with the people who memorized the Quran yeah. and pieces, bits and pieces of skin, uh, animal skin, uh, palms, uh, written all over the place. And there was a battle where those who memorized the Quran, uh, quite a lot of them died. And this is where uh, people started to get scared. So we better start writing this down. These people are dying, and we're going to forget the Quran. Uh, I, I remember Uthman burnt a lot of Qurans. What does that tell you? It's 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 authenticated story. When you burn lots of versions of the Quran, what does that tell you, Abdullah? That means there were versions of the Quran that they were not accurate. But based based on who decided that? Mm -hmm. You know that the Quran that we have today that's supposed to be not different. In Morocco is is written slightly different in different areas than the one in Egypt. Yeah, so, they have the the Warsh and the um, Hafs and Warsh. Region. Yeah, there's all different uh, variants. So now Muslims say that all those variants are actually all from Allah. All of those different variants are from Allah. The and, and actually the reason, the evidence they use, is a hadith that says that Allah re revealed it in seven ahruf. That's when we get into the whole yeah. holes in the narrative because nobody knows what an ahruf is even. Like that word is not defined, and even if you try to know what it means, does it mean uh dialect? Does it mean like each one of those opinions is cancelled because of the fact that like there's evidence against each of the opinions? So, for example, if it means dialect, well, how come some of the Sahaba were reading in this one and they're both in the same Quraysh, for mm -hmm. 
for example, right? So, so the unfortunately, or fortunately for us, but unfortunately for Muslims, there's it's just a mess. And now you know it's becoming kind of public. I I think Muslims do know this. This stuff goes all the way back to, you know, Masahif of Abi Abi Dawood. Like this, this has all been narrated that these problems exist, but. The common Muslim doesn't know this, like you said. Most, I think, even I remember when I was going for Tarawi, they always have to remind the 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 mm. Travi is a special prayer in Ramadan, so I, uh, where everyone comes and follows and reads, tries to read the whole Quran behind the Imam, you know. And so sometimes they'd have an Imam from, like you said, a different country, like Egypt or something, and they're reading it differently, and they have to remind people. By the way, it's not a mistake. <laughs> We're reading a different dialect, a different version, right? A different rivayat. So don't freak out. <laughs> this is still Quran, and you know people are like what? What is this? Like so, people don't know about this, but it, it is there in the books. The 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 people of knowledge or knowledgeable people do know this, but it's not common knowledge, and it is a fitna. It's a problem for the community because it it's weird, right? <laughs> and, and dialects change meanings. I mean, the dialects. Yeah. I mean, you can have the word crack. You know, and in Canada, US and Australia would mean something completely different <laughs> than the one says in, in Ireland. Like in Ireland, you, you go, uh, we're, we, we had a, a good mighty crack yesterday and it would mean <laughs> that we had a laugh. But if you have a crack in oh. Canada, it means you, you're, you're, you're having a go at something. You're, that's, you're trying. So That's another one. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, that's a really good point. Actually, having a crack means like having a laugh. Uh, crack to crack to open a good one. Uh, could be like open the beer. You yeah, know, yeah. yeah. So let me let me go to the comments again because there's a lot of good comments and a uh, a conversation is just flowing. But just to um, get some of these good comments out there. So, uh, stop scamming, man. Thank you for the kind donation there and support. Muslim Dais heaps coin on Christians for saying they believe God looks like an old bearded man. Yet in Sahih Hadith, it says God made man in His image. Saying God doesn't look like a man seems like bidah. So I think Karen Armstrong, you know, of all the people, she did a good job discussing this in the book regarding the Bible. And she said a lot of people don't realize just how anthropomorphic the God of the Bible is, especially the, and she said there's two, there's two authors. I mean, I forget the, the, the technical term she used, but like it's clear from the language used, there's two different people writing it. And over time, it became less anthropomorphic the old God walking in the garden, blah, 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 changed to this sort of, and wrestling with Jacob, you know, um, Joseph, was it Jacob? Jacob, right? Is, uh, Israel became uh, Jacob, his name, even his name, his prophets changed. The one that yes. one that wrestled with God, I think I think is, uh, you know, when they say Benny Israel, they're talking about Yaqub or Jacob. I'm getting confused with the names, but anyway. Yeah. yeah, I think Jacob, right? So all of that became, you know, now... Christians will cringe when they think of God as a man because that's not the modern conception of God. He's not this bearded man. But the same, I think the same issue exists in Islam as well. Muslims don't realize that the hadith can weigh, can weigh him like a man in the sky. Allah is like a man in the sky. He has a shin and this and that. Of course, there's different ways of interpreting all that. The Salafis will take it literally. God has a shin. But we don't know what that like. It, I don't even know how you can say that with a straight face. God has hands, but we can't say what that means. What kind of hands he has? Like, what does that even mean? If you can't say hand has five fingers, then what is a hand? If you can't say shin, like he has a face, and he, it it doesn't. I don't know. Like it's just, it's not it's not another one of those big messes, right? That it's like it doesn't make any sense, right? So God is very anthropomorphic, even in Islam. Now. The way they solve that is the same thing that happened with Christianity is that the 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 when Islam came in contradiction with philosophy, the Greek philosophy, they started to like get kind of uncomfortable when you know the Muslim scholars are having debates with the philosophers, they're starting to realize, oh shit, this doesn't make any sense. Yeah. How does God come down to the lowest heaven every night? <laughs> like it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense because we live in a sphere, right? And so God is basically like a satellite. <laughs> But but isn't he isn't he omnipresent to start with? I mean, isn't he everywhere? So well, Salafis will say himself? no. <laughs> Salafis will say no. He's not omnipresent. He's above the seven heavens. Right. I don't know. Other Sufis might say he's everywhere or something. As a as a Muslim, I I was taught that he if you say he's everywhere, that's shirk. But that's the Salafi thing, right? So so then the the Ashari school of thought, or you know that that Akida came about, which now is much more 
unfalsifiable. Allah's hands means his power, his throne means his dominion. And yeah. it's so it's no longer like a hand. It's just and, like and it's and just made in our own image means then in kind of our nature. I, I guess so. So yeah. the Shaf, the the Ashari um, interpretation, it's unfalsifiable. And and actually, if you're a Salafi, like you you're just what you believe makes no sense, and it's self contradictory, and it's stupid, right? But if you're Ashari, you can kind of like get out of all of this because you can just say, well, it's Kohil and he comes down means you know doesn't mean literal. It just comes down means. He's close to you or whatever. You know, you reinterpret it however you want, right? Now, the, the problem for me with that that resolution is, well, first of all, the, clearly the early Muslims never understood it that way. And second of all, clearly this happened because of outside influences. <laughs> and clearly, that's not what it says. <laughs> it says comes down. <laughs> so Usually all, like, these, uh, all these sophisticated versions of religion comes way later. You know, hindsight is always twenty twenty. So you, San Aquinas would have done it with Christianity, would have done it with Judaism. Mm -hmm. People are reflecting and trying to make things a lot more intelligent, a lot more coherent, a lot more mysterious to hide away from problems. But contemporary to the religion, religion was blunt as. Uh, when somebody picked sticks on saturday uh moses uh consulted with god and the, the god the, the guy was killed just as simple as that there was no sophistication you know people were put to death for for anything back in the day now we're talking no 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 hold on a second this is uh, never the case it got, got and that's why i have the kalam uh you know uh sort of art where you yeah. can play with twist words to absolutely you know, like you have to be an extortionist to play with words and word gymnastics and twisting everything to mean whatever you want it to mean. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So um, I want you guys, so just be just going to end this, this comment and we're going to get on to some other ones. But what I'm going to say is saying God doesn't look like a man seems bitter. It's an interesting comment because when I went to a Sufi mosque, the Sufis were accusing the Salafis of doing bidah. So they're, they're trying to say that Ashari like interpretation is the original one and the Salafi anthropomorphic one is not the original it's an innovation it's funny it's funny because it seems obvious that you just read the hadith what do you understand right you understand God as this like man sort of thing that seems to me the like obvious interpretation but to them they're saying no 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 no. it's bitter what you guys are doing is bitter what we believe God is, you know, beyond conception or whatever. Because the Quran also does say that whatever you imagine, it's not, you know, you can't imagine God, blah, blah, blah. So obviously any any system like this is going to be full whatever, of contradictions. Whatever that means. <laughs> Allah knows best, right? So guys, I want I want to recommend that you check out Hani's channel. So Critical Faculty, the link is in the description as well. Do subscribe to it if you like this sort of content. It He talks a lot about, you know, interesting. He has a lot of interesting people on there. You've had some big names on your show, right? Yeah, well, I've, I've got uh, Lars Krauss coming again uh, next month uh, for the fifth time on Critical Faculty. We're going to talk about cosmology a bit. And I've got Michael Shermer coming again uh, to talk about the, the, the brain and neurology. Uh, yeah, so I, I do like to have um, uh, Robert, Dr. Robert Price now. Um, is uh, I've got a weekly episode with him. Mm -hmm. uh, Art Ehrman has been on my show. Uh, yeah, so I've uh, got uh, prominent uh, speakers. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. So yeah, do check it out. Nerd out. Help your fellow ex-Muslims out. And those of you as well who are new to this channel, if you're new to this channel, please do subscribe. I'm working hard on the channel as well. Consider joining it as well. You can click on join now below to become a channel member. And uh, all right, just going to go through some more comments because some really good comments here. All right, so unlike religion, there's tons of evidence for evolution. Hmm. Shaquille Zaman says creation has creationism has zero evidence zero. That's exactly right. It's a lot of twisting and stretching and you know straw manning and basically making making artificial um, like boundaries where they don't exist. For example, and, saying, like, and yeah. it's and, and it's scientifically falsified because um, <laughs> there is a there is a fundamental um, thing in biology called a, a minimum founding population. Mm -hmm. uh, and, minim uh, and there and there's a minimum mm -hmm. viable population a minimum founding population is the number of species the number of the um members of that particular species required at the at the beginning to establish the beginning of species mm -hmm. uh, 
you, you can't have that with two. It's impossible because you end up with a poor genetic pool and that will lead to the demise of the species. You have each, by the way, each species have a certain number. So horses have a certain number assigned to it. And that number becomes the minimum viable population. Uh, and if the a species go under or below that number, they're considered endangered. Um, so, and the same mm -hmm. thing. For, to, that to, makes sense, to, yeah. To establish humanity just based on two, it will invoke mm -hmm. a couple of problems, scientific issue and uh, an, a moral one, because uh, Islam frowns uh, too much upon incest, but it seems that mm -hmm. proposing that will... Uh, proposed that incest had to be a precondition for life itself. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing just how much we actually know about um, our history. Like, the um, there's actually a comment here. Here we go by Waldun. Read Jerry Coyne's book "Why Evolution Is True." I'm actually quote him on my blog. He says the scientific evidence shows that Adam and Eve could not have existed, at least in the way that portrayed in the Bible or Quran. Genetic data shows no evidence of any human bottleneck as small as two people. There's simply too many different kinds of genes around for that to be true. So we understand through genetics that this is just not possible, right? So yeah, that's a great point, right? Okay. Um, I was under native atheist. I was in, under the impression that Islam has no problem with evolution. I guess I was wrong. The main problem with Islam and evolution is the Adam and Eve thing. If you get like because of Adam and Eve, you have this problem that all of us have a common mother and father, which is just f false. We know again from genetics, again, according from my blog, same same blog, it's on my blog, but it's from Jay Coin's blog, that looking at genes, we find that they trace back to different times in the past. Mitochondrial DNA, that's the DNA that comes down through the mother points to genes in that organelle tracing back to a single female ancestor who lived 140,000 years ago. So we all do have a, a mom, genetic Eve is called. And we also have a genetic Adam. We also have a common male ancestor, but the common male ancestor lived 60 to 90,000 years ago, whereas genetic Eve was 140,000 years ago. So at some point in time, there was a common like ancestor for both of us, but not just one. They're like different. So it's kind of like you can say we all have a we have a great 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 grandpa and a great 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 great, great grandma. But there's no common male and female that we're all from. Like it's the, a tree, the, right? Yeah. The mitochondrial Eve and unfortunately I hate these names. I mm -hmm. hate these names <laughs> popular. They appeal to religious names. So it's uh -huh. called the mitochondrial Eve and chromosomal yeah. Adam. Yeah. And these are supposed to be the most recent, the most recent okay. common ancestor. Oh, so, I see. It's the most recent. So okay. We have we have mul multiple common ancestors in different and then this is the most recent. It's not the mm. first, it's the most recent. Mm -hmm. I see. I see. All right. So I'm just going to keep reading some of the comments. Uh, to think there are some modern Muslims who accept evolution, they're no longer Muslim the moment they do that. Islam is dying, will die. So I don't, I don't agree with this comment because I don't see it like that. I think you can still believe in the religion and take these things in a different way. So for example, if you want to believe in Islam and believe in evolution, for example, there's like prominent um, Muslims, for example, uh, Dr. Muhammad Gilan is an example. He's one of them. Dr. Muhammad Gilan is a neuroscientist and he said, I don't believe in evolution. I accept it, meaning that it's a model that works. It, it, like, there's evidence for it, right? So it's up to them. I mean, it's, it's, it's their problem how they resolve the issue with the Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve to me is a big problem because the story in the Quran makes it very clear that this is like a literal mom and dad that we all have. I don't think that's actually demonstrable in any way. There's no, there's no genetic evidence for that. So, but if you want to believe in Islam and you want to throw this out, that's up to you. Like, yes, I think if you're like us, maybe you just, that will be enough for you to say, well, I'm just going to throw this out because if this is false, the rest of it is false. The, the only way to hold this view is to think of it as metaphorical. I mean, Francis yeah. Collins, the, the director of the Genome Project, uh, this guy is, is, is an avid Christian. He's the, the guy who converted to evangelism when he saw the, uh, a waterfall frozen into three places so he fell on his knees and accepted jesus as um, uh, lord and savior this is the god who was treating christopher hitchens towards the end with isolating the the, the cancer cells to see if he can have a geno genomic code for uh, hitchens to isolate the cancer and help him uh, this guy helped uh with the dover case trying to um 
uh, teach uh, intelligent design in the US where uh, intelligent designers like the Discovery Institute and Michael Behe and all these um, imposters uh, tried to pass uh, a law to teach um, intelligent design along with um, evolution. Uh, he is a Christian God. Uh, he is very religious but he is one of the defenders of evolution. So I think he probably has taken this story as a metaphor and that's the only way you can get around it. Yeah. I don't like, um, I don't like boxing people into boxes. I, I, I really, it's a pet peeve. It's, um, it annoys me to no avail when people that are not Muslim tell Muslims, you can't be Muslim because of this. I just find that like very clinch worthy because I mean, all of religion is made up at the end of the day. I mean, were we to become like Molvis or Mullahs or, you know, sheikhs, uh, you are not proper Muslim, you, how dare you, you know, like, whatever, like, let people believe. I, we can call them out and say this is inconsistent. Yes, you can call them out. But to say someone is not Muslim, I don't know. I That, that bugs me. So I'm not going to say that. So, yeah, I agree. All right. So I'm going to go to some more comments and... Um, Let's keep going. Okay, so this is talking about the <laughs> the moon splitting. Everyone was asleep. Yeah, this is this is a, a dig at uh, you know Farid and su certain apologists. They say things like it was cloudy, people were asleep. Like, like give me a break. Okay, the most important, like you know. <laughs> but but the, it's a good argument. Apparently, the argument if he's done it in the daytime, a lot of people would have seen it. <laughs> <laughs> You can see the moon during the daytime too. It's not yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Claudius says hello, Abdullah, Hani, and other fellow fellow humans. Uh, what doing? Do you think the growing scientific knowledge and vast spread of information will lead to the lead to the stronghold? Or you mean does he mean destruction of religion or releasing? Probably means releasing the stronghold of religion. Yeah, that's I think so. You would agree to that? Right? That or will force religion to evolve. Mm. To, I think what is happening right now, which is heading towards that spiritual realm, mm. everything, you know, you know, you can see it now, Abdullah, uh, even Christianity is taking that form. Um, there's that sort of wishy-washy, not well-defined, but it's the one that it, it feels good, you know, uh, and I don't mind, you know, if, if it's, this is going to be the new form of religion where you're free to believe what you want. Uh, I don't have a problem with that kind of religion uh, or kind mm -hmm. of faith. You know, you know, I, I, I do believe we, we are irrational beings and we're always going to have some sort of religious belief, quote unquote religious. <clears throat> so you get rid of religion. And I think in some ways you're going to end up with the spiritual thing, this new age spiritualism, which is totally, well, I don't want to say it's totally harmless, but it's less harmful than, you know, Islam. But you also end up with this woke religion. I mean, what oh. we're seeing today is... Yeah. It's terrible. It's like, Horrible. you know, people's livelihoods are being destroyed over this, like, this desire to purify, right? To, like, get rid of this, like, racism. And I mean, yes, racism is bad. All of that is bad. But, like, it's going crazy. So I don't want to get too much into that. But, yeah, that is... So yeah, religion is never going to be. I'm with you, Abdullah. I, I I hate that sort of thing. That's why I give platform to those who are cancelled. Because how... I could disagree with them, but you got to have a conversation. How do you change bad ideas by just saying, well, you're out of sight, then you're out of mind. It's not happening, it's not happening, la, 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 I'm not listening. No, you gotta have a conversation because you could actually change their minds. Yep, yep, exactly. All right. Um, so I think this is in, in basically the same question, uh, but he put it as a super chat. Do you think widespread scientific knowledge and vast accessibility of internet will lead to people leaving Islam in droves? I think that's happening. Like that's what we're seeing, right? For 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 yeah. different people, it's different things. For me, the science kind of poked at me and then got me to start investigating, and then the stories and other things as well led to the eventual downfall of Islam in my mind. So definitely, I've heard of a lot of people in the in the Middle East that have read like Dawkins' book and you know Sam Harris, and these things actually affected them. For me, it wasn't that; it was just something else but like the science was the issue for me so yeah I, it depends from different people have different things for example um this famous isis guy musa Serentino, i think his name is he he found somehow he started doubting the stories in the quran and then he left islam so like it, it's a different uh, thing the aussie guy i think he was an aussie i think so yeah musa oh, okay. something yeah 
so yeah it's definitely happening uh thank you for the super chat and thank you to for the super chat native atheist who said not too familiar with islam thanks for the show you're most welcome uh this is why we're doing it so appreciate it uh okay all righty this is a good question can signs ever explain a miracle how would you answer this how you want to you want to take this one yeah and there uh, i think if you scroll down mm -hmm. she elaborated I've, i think i've noticed that she's elaborated on that particular uh from arabian princess she okay yeah her, let's you know, see I, I, you have spotted that sorry Oh, yeah, so that's the one I've spotted, okay. yeah. So I'm just going to read it. Let's say you have cancer and the top doctors tell you you have two days to live, but your cancer is gone the next day. The doctors, the scientists are shocked. That is a miracle. So how would you explain this? Well, okay, so this is where science is very important. Obviously, they're not going to tell you you've got two days to live. Usually when you get diagnosed, you've got several weeks to go. But cancer can go into remission. So if you ask any... A GP or any uh, cancer specialist, they will tell you that a lot of illnesses can go into spontaneous re uh, remissions. And these have nothing. To, these are people from different faith, even atheists, doesn't matter. Cancer can go into remission. Remission means a, it can actually be spontaneously removed because your immune system is actually fighting the, uh, these cancer cells. They, they can. They, we have cases where cancer can go into remission. Prayer has nothing to do with it. As a matter of fact, there was a scientific um, uh, experiment done on the uh, the effect of prayer, and uh, it's been evidently seen that it's uh, it's actually equal. Those who were prayed for performed exactly um, uh, similar to those who weren't prayed for. And at a as a matter of fact, at some point, those who were prayed for performed a bit less impressively because they were feeling guilty about not recovering even though they've been prayed for this is well documented so miracles means the suspension of the natural law cancer going into remission is not a suspension of a natural law therefore it cannot be categorized as a miracle so um yeah that's a good point the the, the study you're talking about is called the harvard prayer study yeah. and it was actually done by christian <laughs> funded by christian organization <laughs> which kind of funny. talking about shooting yourself in the foot there <laughs> Yeah, but it's good good for them. I mean, they funded uh, uh, <laughs> their own demise. So, um, okay, there's, there's a lot more to this. I'm just going to say one thing about this, and I want to get try to get to the other comments. There's still a lot of really good comments. Um, geez, wow, wow, there's so good comments here. Okay, so Arabian Princess, I would just ask you one thing. Why is it that God does not heal amputees? Meaning... Mm -hmm. I lost a I lost a limb. How come we never see a miracle like that? Why is it that the miracles we see are always in cases where it's something vague, something we don't quite understand, like a cancer in the body, something very complicated, so that there's like a 50-50 chance you might actually the doctors are wrong because they don't totally understand the you know the way the cancer interacts with the body, the body's immune. So it's it's like there's like a zillion variables and and there's no way to mathematically um predict what's going to happen like you you just don't know we can try to model it and we know you know you, there's like a 60 percent chance this will happen there's a 20 percent chance this will happen and there's a chance 10 percent chance you'll survive and it'll go away there is a chance that we know that based on modeling but we don't know exactly what what's going to happen because based on a million variables and your genetics and your, your body's shape and your health and blah 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 but like something that's like clearly like you lost a limb that just never you never get a limb back why is that theoretically a miracle should be able to you should be able to get your fingers back if they could <laughs> you know what i mean it sounds it sounds funny but why is it funny it, it makes sense what i'm saying right like it's a good point like why is it that miracles only happen with like these like gray area illnesses that we don't really understand and miracles do happen, but not because of God. Miracles happen because of something unexpected. It's not a miracle in the sense that God intervened. It's a miracle in the, in the sense that something that had like a 0.1% chance happened. Like you, your, your child was about to die and then something that should have happened didn't happen. The child didn't die. The child came back to normal health. And we, we attribute this to, you know, and, and the funny, the interesting thing is when we look at psychology, the more, the less control you have over the situation, the more superstitious you become. So they've done studies where 
based on the situation you're in. For example, you know, like like pitchers in baseball. Pitching is one of the most difficult things. And there's like a very high variability of success. Like sometimes you're going to throw the ball and everyone's going to hit it. Sometimes you're going to throw the ball and they're going to miss it. In situations like that where there's very little control, people tend to be super suspicious, uh, super superstitious. They'll they'll have like this thing, they'll kiss a rabbit's leg or a four-leaf clover. They'll like, they'll have certain thing they do all the time. They'll, they'll try to bring control back to their life mm -hmm. because there's very low control they have in that situation. And that's how we humans are. When we are losing control of a situation, an environment, a, a sickness is coming, we become irrational, right? Like there's a, there's a popular meme that says, you atheists, when you're on a plane or you're on a ship and the ship is sinking, are you going to call God? Hell yeah, because you become superstitious. Like, does that mean that's the right thing to do? No, it's, it's a superstitious, dumb, like I'm totally out of options. I'm just going to like yell for help to whoever's out there. Yeah, like that's not that's not that's not the rationality at play. That's just desperation. So when you're desperate, you're gonna do desperate things, right? I remember in one of the episodes in The Simpsons, Homer uh, said, uh, uh, "I know I have been neglecting you, big guy, and I'm not a praying man." And I think it was a plane or something. But if you're there, please, please, please help me, Superman. <laughs> 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 oh my god that's funny yeah that's a good one okay so um okay yeah so shaquille zaman said allah and muhammad forgot to mention evolution yeah that's a big problem by the way in case you want to know how theists resolve this issue muslim theists in particular it's a very weird and obscure way of resolving it what they say is they say i don't know like even to say it, it sounds so dumb but i'll just tell you they say that when allah asked when the angels asked Allah, why are you going to put a, a creature on earth that's going to do like corruption and blah, blah, blah. Allah said, I know what you don't know. So they say this means there was already like Neanderthals or something like, like it's such a stretch. Uh -huh. <laughs> like even to say it, I just feel like laughing, but that's what they say. It's yeah. like... Okay. But, but it's, kind of, it's kind of they're trying to hide and uh, 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 because it pokes a question at you. Uh, angels are not supposed to have free will. They were designed to obey and worship. Why yeah. the hell suddenly they're they're having? Um, it's like a democracy. Sudden, all of the, out of a sudden, <laughs> they're they're saying, "No, no, no, hold on, that's not a, such a great idea." And how do they have that foreknowledge? You know, uh, and, uh, how do they know what, what what's blood? I mean, they talk about blood, spelling of blood. How would they have knowledge of the blood? That that's a very good point. That's a very good point. Yeah, I think I think whoever made up the story wasn't really thinking that far ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no. So here's another very nice comment. Uh, Maimi Hoshino says, "As an ex-Muslim myself, thank you so much for this video and the other videos you do and stuff. You're most welcome. This is this is an important thing that we have to do, right?" Okay, Arabic translated meme says a story of Dolkanain that was a big mess. Yeah, the story of Dolkanain is what led this ISIS guy to leave ISIS. So, like, imagine we're getting like the work we were doing is getting people to leave ISIS. Like, what better <laughs> thing can you do for humanity, you know? And you know, I wanted to say something. Um, there's many communities on the internet, and I like. I haven't, like, you know, there's many overlaps. You know, there's a gaming community. There's, like, different parts of my personality as a father and this and that. And I haven't found that I fit into any community as well as I fit into the skeptic community. No matter what community I go to, whether, I'll just give you an example, like Bitcoin. The Bitcoin community, the crypto community is full of libertarians and people that are anti-government. It's the, this, 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 Things like that and even like superstitious people and like, you know, but like the skeptic community is where I feel the most home. I feel like there's so people that, you know, they have a head on their shoulders. They think clearly. They care about evidence. You know, the, it's it's just like I, I got to say I love this community. I agree because okay. you can apply uh, skepticism to everything. You can, you exactly. can be a skeptic gamer. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So, um, how long do they say the Hadith took to collect? There's so many and many places for them to go to and many people to talk to. So, I have an article on my blog about this, but several hundred years, I guess. Like, I mean, it, it went on for a long time. And then eventually, they were canonized people. 
scholars decided which ones were considered like like the you know the the sahi canon so sahi muslim sahi bukhari and so on and so forth right but it's 200 years we know it's 200 years after the event they were collected these were not even arabs uh, they were from mm. outside of arabia um and um uh, it, it's uh, the the bukhari situation is quite curious for me because uh, he ends up with about three and a half to four thousand hadith from something like around in the hundreds of thousands yes yeah, yeah. Done the math on this if he's done uh, this guy would have not had to eat or drink uh, and work 24 hours a day and still would have not gone through the numbers he claimed to have gone through something yes, is yeah. right <laughs> yeah should have gabin made a video doing the math on this is it's pretty funny yeah it's there's just there's no human way for anyone to memorize that i mean yes human beings are amazing and they can memorize a lot but when you're talking about the hereafter when you're talking about like little intricate details that affect billions of people's lives this is not the right way to do it. This is very irresponsible, sloppy. And that's why we have terrorism in the world today because of the Islamic texts. You know, there's recent blasphemy killing that happened in Nigeria, which was so sad. It's, all of this is because of Islam. It's horrible, I mean, yeah. It's horrible, right? Um, Arabian princess said, so the early Muslim community couldn't agree which Quran was the right one. No, that's not that's not accurate. Um, the early Muslim community just decided all of them were the right one. <laughs> They're all right. There's, there's no contradiction. They all, every single ne version, which again now is becoming very, very clear to to the popular to the the public that this is a very human effort. This the rivayat, the the the, the chain of transmission is kind of like a hadith. Mm -hmm. There was a teacher that taught that learned from this guy, that learned from this guy, that learned from this guy, that supposedly learned from Muhammad, that supposedly learned from Gabriel. But like the chain is very human. And it's yeah. a big mi mess. Like it's a big mix up of like different things. And so we don't have any pure Quran. What we have is a mish mishmash of different ahruf or whatever you want to call it, different versions that are all mixed together, right? Yeah. Maybe maybe she's referring as well to the, the, the incident of burning of other versions of the Quran. Oh, right. and, Osman, and and that obviously betrays that something was happening there. Obviously, okay. we're conflicting version at the very early stage that's Before, a good point the ibn you know, abbas had a conflict with abu Bakr and refused to give back i remember there was uh, some was it abu ibn abbas who didn't want to give his yeah. and and one of them was in um aisha had her own quran there yeah and some of them refused to give it and burn it and so basically even though uthman tried to get the variants yeah it still ended up yeah that's a good and point they, there they was referring to some surahs were not were omitted like the the uh, the stoning um uh verse they're saying there used to be a stoning verse but a goat or or a, a chicken came and ate yeah, it goat, yeah. under the beds of a bit of aisha which is like a funny yeah, story yeah, yeah. this is this is the what god's supposed to conserve his uh, his word and yep. imagine just a random goat or a chicken going and eating his words so shaquille demanded please subscribe and like thank you so much friendly ex-muslim please keep up what you're doing keep up the good work thank you so much uh, Islam Channel USA said you are repeating the traditional Islamic story that you claim you don't trust. So um, this kind of comment comes up quite a bit. I don't take the Islamic narrative as God-given truth, but I use it as a model to discuss because I'm not I'm not one of those revisionists that you know throws out the whole thing and said the entire religion was made up by a later caliph. I do believe there was a guy called Muhammad. I do believe he, he did some things. I don't know exactly whether he moved his finger or didn't move his finger to that extent. I don't believe we even know the true age of Aisha. I think we know she was a child. So a lot of the details are, are all gone. We don't know for sure. And I, I'm, I'm okay with this being a vague sort of cloud of knowledge about Muhammad. Because I don't care. My, my hereafter is not at stake in the sense that, like to a Muslim, they, they need this to be 100% true. Because your entire life is based on this. For me... I'm discussing this story so that other Muslims can understand the contradiction. So it's like, you know, it's like when when Marvel fans are making fun of Batman and they say, well, you claim Batman's the best, but how does it make sense? He doesn't even have any superpowers, but he's like beating up these people with superpowers. They don't believe in Batman, but they're just showing you the story is dumb because Superman's a, not Superman, but because uh, Wolverine is a real hero here. You know what I'm saying? And the Batman guy was saying, oh, Wolverine's, what kind of guy is Wolverine? All, Magneto can just take his, like, whatever. Like, you don't have to believe in it to critique it, right? You can see it to my left there, Superman versus Batman. <laughs> yeah, you can see them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I don't have to believe, I don't, I don't trust Muhammad was a prophet. I don't trust he split the moon. But we can still poke holes in it. 
from a consistency perspective there's there's a mathematical uh, or philosophical thing called proof by contradiction proof by contradiction means you have a premise and a premise and a con and a conclusion and if you can show that the premises lead to a contradiction then you can throw out the premises so premise 1 is muhammad is a is a prophet of god premise 2 is muhammad came up with the quran and the quran says blah 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 well those two things contradict so therefore we know that the premises cannot be true he didn't speak to god he made it up because that doesn't mean you accept the premises you know what i'm saying I'm, none of us is saying we believe muhammad really i mean maybe some people do believe he i mean we don't know for sure but we don't need to know for sure we can still critique the story because that's what muslims believe and if they want to throw it out by all means throw it out you know question the hadith question all of it there's no more islam to to talk about then you know what i mean in, in Aristotelian syllogism, that will be a non sequitur because the two premises that have actually have nothing to do with each other. So uh, you, you don't have, you can, maybe there are some Muhammad mythicists here, like the Jesus mythicists sort of thing. Uh, but you, you can you can be content that Muhammad was a historical figure and he believed what he's done in, to, to be, but does, that doesn't mean that he was actually speaking to God in, in honest truth. So the, there was a question about that. I can't find it. That said, uh, did Muhammad really exist? Just or, or did Jesus really exist? I can't find it now. It's gone now. But oh, there right. was actually a question like that. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Well, that's that's a debate gone, and even in the Christian <laughs> world, I think there was a big debate between Bart Ehrman and Robert Price, uh, moderated by Matt Dillahunty. Was all about that. It, uh, was also, Jesus a historical yeah. figure? Yeah. Also, I mean, the most famous uh, um, Mythicist is um, his name Richard is Carrier. Right. Yeah, Richard Carrier, right? Richard, Richard Carrier is the yeah. most famous. Okay, so yeah, we won't get into that. I I do believe he existed. I do believe there's evidence for Muhammad existing, and and if you read a book by um, oh my God, I, my mind's not working. Uh, Muhammad book, uh, Doctor Sean Anthony, Sean Anthony, he has a lot of evidence for Muhammad existing. There's there's like people that talked about a prophet and this Arabian prophet and. <laughs> stuff like that so i don't believe he was a mythical figure i i do not believe that uh, do you agree with that uh i, I think muhammad existed i think we've okay. got enough evidence and there we go so it's enough for jesus enough but there are some elements I, i'm i'm not 100 percent, but i could say with jesus maybe i'm about 90 10 convinced that a, a historical okay. jesus existed. that's a good yeah, yeah, that's that's and, good. You have some skepticism there. That's good. Oh yeah, I never look. I've, in my old age now, I never go hundred percent on anything. Oh, lady, that's that's a that's a very good point way to put it. Uh, even even it. on the, I'm an atheist. Even on the existence of God, uh, uh, even Dawkins said that. He said he's he had a scale of seven, and he said he would it'd be about six point seven. He'd always want to leave just in case, because remember, our brains are quite deceiving. I could be deceived by my own brain and yeah. I, I want to keep an area where I can, you know, save my skin if I have to at the end. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, it's, it's a good, it's good to remain a little bit agnostic, right? I mean, agnosticism is a very fair saying. I don't know is a good thing too. So yes. food and religion. Love you, brother. Uh, if, if this Hadith was revealed, why was it a problem for Uthman that people were differing in the recitation? Just tell those people about Muhammad revealing the Quran in seven dialects. Yeah, that's a good point. My guess is that he foresaw like a bigger problem maybe he realized that seven is going to become 70 is going to become 700 is going to become 7000 i think there was some reference to like other other books being corrupted or something maybe they they, they thought about the bible and they i don't know i'm not sure what, what was going on through his brain but i i think he foresaw like a potential crisis and he tried to prevent it of course it didn't work some of the sahaba refused to get you know, get rid of their versions and they, they, they managed to survive. And, and so, yeah, it, it became, um, do you have, do you have any comments on that? No, no, I completely agree. I, I think, um, uh, the, the problem is again, my, my problem has always been, there was a God at language. Remember the Muslims believe that there is a book called, uh, the, the gospel. Yeah, the, 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 <laughs> the, 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 yeah, and and the Torah, and these were actual books, just like the Quran, descended from heaven on on these people. Uh, uh, and these uh, and these books were corrupted; they're supposed to have been corrupted. Uh, so you would think God would have learned to listen, 
that humans will always change his word and will choose a different. <laughs> but he is insisting on the same method that has failed twice already <laughs> and give a book that will be understood because these are human brains and human brain, brains perceive words differently. <laughs> um, so it's an inherent problem of the method of transfer. He needed to have a different protocol uh, of, of transferring his message. Yeah. Bro, and, and, um, yeah. Th third time's a triumph. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If it doesn't, God's, God's applying the lesson. If it doesn't, if you, if it doesn't work, try, try again. But it work, you know, it work. I, in, all, in Einstein's own words, uh, he defines stupidity as the, uh, the ability <laughs> to do the, the same thing over and over again, failing and expecting different um, uh, results. Well, and, and, yeah, you know, insanity, wanna, right? I don't want to upset people here who believe in God, but come on. I mean, that's quite evident. Yeah, Even us humans, when we fail three times doing the same thing, most smart humans will try some other technique at that point. Yeah, yeah that's that's true. It's it's funny. They, obviously, we don't believe there's any God doing this. This is just all human works. Yes. Muslims, Muslims wish there was one Quran. They wish there was no variance, and they wish Muhammad didn't do some of the things he did. I agree with this very much so. Uh, Arabic translate memes. Thank you for the super chat, brother or sister. Uh, my analysis is that the reason why Muhammad never asked for the Quran to be documented as a book, like um, compiled as a book, is because of hadith and multiple verses say the end of time is near, so there was no point. <laughs> I think, I think this is exactly. I mean, when you look at Muhammad's behavior, he was not behaving like he actually cared about his ummah. He died without telling them who was going to be in charge. He died without compiling the Quran into the book. This is his. This was his one job. Like he had one job, bring the Quran to humanity. He didn't even put it in the book. I mean, actually, did you know about this very interesting story with the, the huh? day he was dying? And he actually, because remember, he was supposed to be an illiterate guy. He actually said when he was dying, "Bring me a pen and paper, so I write you something that you will never stray." After. Yeah, and Omar Omar al Khattab said, "Hold on a second, this guy's waffling. He's dying." He actually, you know, vetoed the decision. He said, "No, no, no, you block him. He he's not going to yeah. write a thing." Yeah, he's losing his mind, right? Yeah. Well, the Shah used this episode to say he was about to nominate Ali as a caliph. Yes. Um, uh, or you never know what, what kind of his. That's his will. He might have yeah. been wanting to say something. He yeah. could have. He could have wanted to say, "Hey, guys, I was having you on." The whole thing is the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's a good point. And actually, I think um, this actually shows that the very human nature of the people around Muhammad and Muhammad. Like, first of all, Muhammad never planned this well. He's about to die. Now he's like, suddenly, let me light this down. And like you said, they vetoed him. They overrode him. So how is it that this guy didn't have the foresight to plan this properly? Not only that, it shows that if this is true, that Omar was being very political and wanted the power for himself rather than, or for Abu Bakr, rather than for um, letting Ali to be the, the next caliph. Because, so again, this is all an issue of, um, you know, all an issue of power and wealth and control. So, yeah, this is basically what happened, I think. I think Muhammad never, I don't think he, I don't know if he really believed what he was saying. I think he, he was a little bit, you know, I think he did have temporal lobe epilepsy, as Abdullah Gondal has documented very well in, a, in the series that we did. So I think it makes sense that he probably did believe a lot of the things he was saying. But yeah, maybe he thought this is just going to end at any time now. So there's no point. This, this to me, makes a lot of sense, this theory. Uh, Native atheists. So there's different versions of the Quran that Muslims can't agree on. Actually, they kind of do agree on it in the sense that they've now made it the official narrative that all of the, the, the Quranic versions are, are legit. This is, uh, this is what they say. So I, I need to just pause for one moment if you just want to i don't know if you want to comment on this i need to step away for one second sure oh i agree it's very similar to the christian position might not be as pronounced as in christianity where remember in christianity uh, the debate isn't like the same um, the christians don't believe that these words were verbatim from god you know unlike mm. the if you try to understand Christianity from the Muslim point of view, you'll completely miss the point. There was no book that was given to Jesus, like uh, the yes. Christians and all that. Uh, uh, even the four Gospels uh, were, were, were written not even by the people who were supposed to be been attributed to, because they were written after the event, and they were written in Koine Greek, which is a language that was not 
going to be familiar to uh, simple farmers and fishermen. Um, remember, in antiquity, only one or two percent could could uh, write and read. Uh, mm. This was supposed to be an elite thing. So the, the writers of the Gospels were not the disciples of Christ, uh, nor uh, the, the Gospel is actually descended as a, a full book. Um, uh, a verbatim from God. It's more it's supposed to be more inspired. It's supposed, yep. that's why Christians can have a little bit more leeway and not to be not as literalist as as the Muslims. Yes, yes, yes. So um, I have to get going in the next fifteen minutes, but let's try to get to some more comments. This is sure. really interesting comments, and this is an awesome conversation we're having. So, Budiman Fadil said the Akida defense thing was a big discourse slash fight during the Islamic dynasty, like. Right? Yeah, Reza Aslan, I know a lot of people don't like him, but in his book, he talked about this, how <clears throat> basically there was like Mutalizite, the, the Mutalizi uh, position, which is kind of considered the rationalist position nowadays. Um, this was a like a, they, they have very different ways of interpreting Allah's attributes and who Allah is and his speech and blah, blah, blah. This was the official position of the Muslim empire and they were persecuting the, what is now Ahlul Sunnah, which is the, you know, the other positions. And then the next Caliph, I, I think Maimun, I don't remember the details, but it's in the book. It flipped because he actually converted or whatever, selected the other sect. And then the Mutaliza became oppressed to the point where there's no, there is no Mutalizi position anymore. There's no scholars. There's no, it's not part of the Muslim Ummah anymore. There's no, that, that, school of thought is gone so it's very much a very human thing that which which schools of thought survive and which are eliminated it's basically based on the whims of the the politicians and to some extent right i mean same thing with christianity you know when jesus um jesus when emperor constantine converted to christianity the thing spread like crazy right so yeah. it's again it's a very human thing right okay um yeah, someone's saying a comment was deleted. Um, no, I didn't uh, delete any comment. I, I mean, too busy with this conversation, but I do have other admins here, but I don't think we deleted any comment about hijabis. I don't know what the comment Sometimes was. Sometimes it happens on YouTube automatically for into some sort of uh, algorithm. Yeah, yeah. Word. There's some there's some words that are blocked or whatever. Right? Uh, does Abdullah still use the epilepsy uh, argument? Does he not realize it's not a valid argument? Okay. I, th I think you need to watch the 10 episodes. The, you need to watch this series on Temple, on Muhammad. And uh, there's so much evidence. I, I don't even need to go through it all over again. But like, let me just tell you, I'm reading a book called Hallucinations right now by Oliver Sacks. And let me tell you, the things I read in this book, and all he's doing is just describing what people hallucinate and trying to explain why they... There have been people today that thought the food was talking to them. Do you know Muhammad said that the food used to talk to him? This is this is a common thing that happens today. And we know why it happens. We understand the neural pathways and the biology behind it. Do you really believe that Muhammad was so special that when the food was talking to him, this was actually not just his brain malfunctioning? Like, it's like, like people's like, confidence in saying it's not a valid argument just makes me laugh we have so much evidence that this is the best explanation for muhammad's behavior but but you just want to say it's not a valid argument okay good good luck trying to say it's not a valid argument abdullah gondo is going to come up and we're going to have another um live stream where we're going to go through some of the responses to farid farid went through some of the stuff and we're going to show how he straw man how he cherry picked how he's basically not you know Anyways, maybe Adam and Eve were fish <laughs> because we evolved from fish, right? That's funny. Okay, uh, Beej is basically saying the same thing as you about genetic Eve and genetic Adam. And they were in different parts of the African continent. I wish they wouldn't have called them Adam and Eve. Yes, yeah. And 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 and, and popularizing science. That's, you know, uh, Stephen Hawking, when he called, so we, we would know the mind of gods in brief history of time. Uh, Einstein did the same thing. God does not play dice with the universe. Unfortunately, what does that mean? What does that mean? I don't understand that. Uh, well, Einstein was referring. So obviously, the Muslims used it as God was a Hanifi Muslim <laughs> by referring. Uh, Einstein said he was he belonged to the God of Spinoza, which is pantheism. Oh, which is, okay. Yeah. 
uh, that we are all one unit. But what he meant um, was actually was in response to the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics. Of <laughs> Yes. Oh, we're talking about that. That's the indeterminacy of the Copenhagen interpretation that uh, you don't know the full variables of uh, the position of the quantum mechanics. So if you know, usually in classical mechanics, if you know uh, two values, you'd know the third. That's not the case with quantum mechanics. And um, um, uh, the interpretation was deemed called the indeterminacy in quantum mechanics. And he said, no, 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 no. Uh, the, the rules of physics are not supposed to be that random. There must be some hidden variable. He was talking about quantum mechanics, but he used a poetic language, unfortunately, because our language is quite lacking. We still say God, you and I, probably, when we see something shocking or, you know, or Jesus or, you know, but we don't mean these words, but I think we need to start replacing these words by something secular because they're often misunderstood. Like a Muslim guy would say, how how can you say Jesus and God when you don't believe in God? When you say, like, oh my God, I, I forgot to do this. And you go, we're you an atheist. Why are you saying God? Yeah, no, now that you explained it to me, oh my God, that's a beautiful comment. God does not play dice with the universe. I mean, that's that's like, now that you explained to me what it means, I'm like, wow. He's talking <laughs> I about, it. The, he's talking I about the, it. Rules, the laws of physics are de deterministic and not indeterminate yeah and that's the wow. interpretation. nothing to do with that whatsoever amazing okay chilling with science says wonderful conversation abdullah glad to see you fully <laughs> covered from covid on your feet again uh fully covered i still have this nagging cough but um basically the way yeah I, i'm lucky i think i got the variant version of it which was less con more contagious but less um severe so like like a couple of days i was fine but like yeah the cough is still a little bit there the, the symptoms so, are um mild yeah but I, but i feel fine like i went to the gym and everything i'm good now so uh infidel noodle hello nice to see you again okay oh yeah so <laughs> this is talking about the the covid it took me five and a half weeks oh i'm so sorry to hear that man i i think i got a different version of it i mean I am fully vaccinated, but I don't think the vaccine lasts. The antibodies last. Well, it's like six months or something, and then they're gone, right? It depends on the, on what you're taking, but some are three, some are six. But I'm gonna get a fourth dose uh, pretty soon to travel overseas. So it looks like we might have to live with this bloody thing for quite a while. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yep, yep, yep. Okay. So yeah, no, I, I don't think, I think I got the lesser version of it, right? Okay, so I got to go in the next five minutes. Um, sure. I'm just going to see if there's any, there's more questions about the epilepsy. I'm not going to, not going to waste my time. If you want to know the hadith or if you don't believe in hadith, that's fine. Then don't believe Muhammad basically did anything. You can just, <laughs> like he had no miracles. He didn't split the moon. He didn't teach about praying five times a day. You pray three times a day. There's no such thing as tarawih. There's no, like the hajj is just some random thing. Friday prayer is like you sit down and you talk. Like, what, what do you do for Friday prayer? I don't know. It's not in the Quran. It just says you get together and then you don't do your business and then you go back to your work. So what is like, what is, what is Islam? There's no, you're not a Sunni Muslim. That's fine. I don't, I don't know why you're here because we don't, we're not talking to Quranists here, right? So um, if you don't believe in hadith, Congratulations. Good for you. Good for you. Yes, Muhammad didn't have epilepsy then. Muhammad didn't even exist probably <laughs> if the hadith doesn't exist. Um, is there anything you want to add while I'm just going through the comments? No, what, what I'm saying is uh, I'm doing, um, uh, you know, Derek is a common friend, uh, Myth yes. Vision. Uh, uh, so, I, I, and I, at some point, maybe we can collaborate together, you and I, Abdullah, but I'm doing series on the debunking the scientific claims in the Quran. There's 13 of them that I'm focused on. I've already done part one with Derek. Uh, so everything from cosmology to embryology. So we compare the, the claim of the Quran and we contrast it with science. What actually contemporary science? And we obviously don't talk about Keith Moore, uh, the Bukaye guy, <laughs> Saudi-funded university, those who believed the Quran was the word of God. But weirdly, none, not a single one of them has converted to Islam. So, you know, you have Keith Moore say, oh, this has to be from God, but takes his couple of million bucks and uh, stays, uh, sticks to his own religion or probably non-religion. Um, but it's, it's quite interesting to see. Uh, so we do that right now, you know, the science and what does the Quran say? Unless you are one of those smart people who would say the Quran is not a scientific book, then you're smart. 
Yeah. Do you do you find there's um there's any point talking about the scientific miracles anymore? Like, do people still believe this? Like, why why is this why is this a focus of what you're doing? It's in vogue right now because remember, uh, the, the, right right now, what's in fashion is science. Science is so powerful right now that if you want to prove uh, your point of view, you want science to back you up. So in the 70s and the 80s, the Saudi Arabians realized this uh, situation and they said, hold on a second here. Uh, science is becoming a big thing. We want to show that our book contains a lot of science. And that's why you have these, uh, the Bukaye movement, uh, it's called Bukayeism, the Mogori mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Keith Moore and all these. And there was a Japanese guy who did prayers on water and realized that the water molecules change when you have the Islamic uh, prayer or the Quran. Uh, weird stuff. Uh, but it's it's quite fashionable. But a lot of nuanced um, uh, uh, Muslims who are scientists have realized the problems with that. Because if you're going to claim that embryology is correct in the Quran, you you better be ready for the evidence, the hard evidence from medical textbooks that will tell you that is not the case. Mm -hmm. It seems like we have an actual flat earth in the in the chat, uh, Malik. So sometimes it's hard to tell whether people are trolling or not, but I do know that I can tell you that if he actually believes what he's saying, then he's a Salafi. The only people that are able to hold on to this insanity, like this insane version of reality, are uh, Salafis because you you basically are stuck with a lot of the the texts in the Quran. The earth is spread out like a bed and whatever. So the only, I think for them, oh, actually even the Hadith about Allah coming down and this and that, the only way to basically solve this is to to be a flat earther. Um, I recommend you you watch the Netflix documentary Beyond the Curve if you care about evidence, and you see how they they try to scientifically prove the flat earth. Have you seen this documentary? I have, and I've actually done two parts uh, episode on my channel debunking flat Earth scientifically, <laughs> fully. Nice. Uh, yeah. The problem is people like this don't usually care about evidence, so it's not yeah. like you can really convince someone that doesn't care, right? So that's the unfortunate thing. Um, and yeah, I don't really engage with people like that because, you know, at that level, at that point, like there's more than enough evidence. If if you if you believe this, then I don't it's know, not contention it anymore. Yeah, it's it's, yeah. it's it's object. It has been objectively verified. We actually exited, uh, and we've taken pictures and videos of the thing. You know, in, in, <laughs> in it's, it's no point in that. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so that's the wrap. And um, I'm I'm I want to tell everyone to check out um Honey's channel. It's critical faculties below. Subscribe. Like he said, he's going to be doing some interesting stuff on science in the Quran and uh, you never know I might show up on the channel again at some point or join him and Derek on this channel or one of our channels so yeah definitely do subscribe to Hani and let's get his um, you know get him some more audience there and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed any any final words you want to add before we go no I always enjoy your company you're 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 such a, a nice easy person to have a chat with and uh, you do a great job uh, your your channel has helped uh, many people um, and uh, your demeanor um, is quite friendly and quite, you know, humble. So I, I'm, I'm a big fan, Abdul. Yeah, thank thank you so much. And I appreciate it. It was actually fun um, talking to you today. Like we didn't even have like a real strict topic, but like there's so many things to talk about. The The chat was on fire today. Great conversations happening in the, in the chat. So that was good. Actually added value to the conversation. And it's good to interact with people as well. Because, you know, we have the prepared... You, I have a lot of prepared content. I have less of the live content. So it's good to... This was great, right? Maybe we can do even call in at, at some point. Um, yeah. And, I'm, and, I'm, and yeah, thanks uh, Ultra for the, the last minute super chat. I've subscribed to Critical Faculty. Be like Ultra. Yeah, exactly. Subscribe to Critical Faculty. And um, sorry, go ahead. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, wonderful. You've got wonderful audiences as well. It's pretty good, well-educated and very smart and witty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love my audience. This is it's good. We have good times here. So I was kind of wondering if it gets some trolls, but we didn't, which is good. It was mostly yeah, good people. So I uh, appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. So that's a wrap. Um, I'm, I'm off to the movies with my kids to see um, uh, Doctor Strange. I, I've heard mixed things about it. <laughs> I loved it. I loved oh, it. Oh, awesome. It's brilliant. Yeah. Okay, awesome. All right, everyone. So do check out Hani's channel. Subscribe to my channel too. And we'll see you at the next live stream with Abdullah Gondal. So we're going to be going through the epilepsy thing. We're going to be wrecking Farid's
response, his rebuttal. So it's going to be good. Uh, there's a good presentation that Gondol's been working on. So uh, we'll, he's now off Twitter, so he's focusing on that exclusively. So yeah, we'll, we'll see you guys soon. Take care, everyone. Bye.